Okay, so here we are. This is the 134, our third electrical class. And we're gonna cover a lot in the class on corrosion. We're also gonna cover digital switching, cell phone, you know, remote monitoring of boats, fun stuff like that. First lesson I wanna talk about is, now that you've had a couple, you've added AC and DC, is one of the big misconceptions, and that is about AC electricity and water. Okay, and so just to recap, <clears throat> we talk about galvanic action, right? The nobility scale. So if I have stainless steel and bronze and I put on a sacrificial anode, if this is less noble, this goes away and then our bronze and stainless is protected. Okay, so we'll talk about bonding systems and review all of that this quarter. <clears throat> now. The next thing that happens is we talk about straight current corrosion. And straight current is where we actually energize with DC, okay? Battery power somehow inadvertently gets into a, a vessel and it interacts with itself or another vessel. And that is where we can, in a short period of time, do that. This is less than two weeks we destroyed this propeller. We, meaning my friend Kevin, on his boat, okay? <clears throat> and so that's straight current. We'll get to that. Okay. It also does things like check out this propeller shaft. There's a thousand dollar mistake right there. Okay. This boat had straight current and it just destroyed that propeller shaft. So that's all it's got. But let's focus on AC. What I've done here. Okay. That's why you're in a circle back there. I'm going to stay back here. None of my bits are going to touch the water. I have a meter right here set up for AC voltage. We'll bring it back live. It's connected to the neutral, which is in our whole power grid. On um, that and in here, dangling in the water, I have the positive lead, okay? Now, <clears throat> right here, I have a shore power cord and I have the black and the white stripped off, hanging into a five gallon pail of water. Don't try this at home. Only in the safety of a lab where we've got a circle of friends, okay? So, got it plugged into a power pylon. We've got an ELCI box right here, okay? And so overcurrent protection, and it's hooked right up to this, okay? What does the ELCI protect? What does it do? How does it work? They're all quiet, we're rolling film. <laughs> Monitors, the hot and the neutral, right? We wanna make sure what goes to the boat is coming back to the boat on that neutral wire. Okay, so this has got a 30 milliamp threshold. So it's just dangling in bare water. Whew, filled it up this morning, right there in the sink. What's gonna happen when I throw the breaker? Should trip. Should trip? One would think if there's just a the lead dangling right into the water, right? It should trip. Do you agree? Yeah. I'll say no. All right, we got one saying no. Why are we going to say no? I, I don't know why. I just Because when I ask these questions, it's always a trick. <laughs> I feel like it's, yeah, it's not going to be the obvious answer for whatever reason, but I don't know why. Okay, well, here it goes. Open just turned it on. Green light, no reverse polarity. And we got to reset this here. Circuit. Now, 50 volts. So there's 50 volts floating on the surface. Did not trip the circuit breaker. This is the big misconception. Everybody thinks if you drop an extension cord, right, it's just going to short out too much current trip. Not necessarily the case. Okay. This is this is not an overcurrent situation. In fact, there is no current. So we've got this meter set up to measure AC current this meter to AC volts and we got 50 volts, okay? Why didn't it trip? Well, I got, I got, I had a cheat sheet behind me that gave me the answer. To the a cheat sheet? What did the, what did the it's, cheater it's, in the back it's, say? There's not, a, there's not a circuit being made. It's, it's uh, like if it was salt water, it might be different, right? If it was salt water, but it's fresh water. Fresh water. Is fresh water conductive? No. No. Now, depending on certain circumstances and mineral content, whatever, it might be slightly conductive, but it's not. This is why, unfortunately, a handful of people die every year 
never ever swim in a freshwater marina. We really shouldn't swim in a marina around boats anyways, but 100% certain in fresh water. And I'm gonna put a link to this video uh, that Kevin Ritz put out about his son Lucas because what happens is remember we talked about AC electricity and we said 60 cycles messes with your nerves mm -hmm. there are 60 cycles and 50 some volts right there on the surface of this water and it's got nowhere to go and if a human being swims into that that radius of energy it's not blowing anything on the dock what happens is your limbs stop doing this and they go like this and your brain's telling them to move and they don't move and that's why unfortunately people die every year they drown when you stop moving your appendages you sink like a rock i mean i guess there's a few people that might float but generally not face up where you can breathe okay so <clears throat> interesting right so now i happen to be prepared you got a little salt what happens? Is that Himalayan salt? Himala no, this is, uh, this is ball canning salt. So there might be some extra preservatives in here. Nitrate, maybe. Something. Let's see. Let's some salt, I guess. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we're up to an amp. Okay, now, I'm not going to stir it. A lot of that salt probably isn't in solution yet. But salt water, like we have right over here at Cap Sandy Marina, is really good. It's almost optimum for raising the con conductivity of the water. And so, in one and a half, let's put a little bit more salt in here, and just for giggles. What was it at before you put the salt in? Zero, 100% yeah. yeah. zero. So now I've got four amps. We still haven't tripped. Uh, voltage has actually went down, no 35. It's fluctuating a little bit on AC. So we still have voltage in the water. Um, but it's going down, now it's at 18, okay? Because we're looking at the surface of the water with this, and if the water is conductive, the electricity is going at four amps right now, down from the black, returning through the water, and through the white, okay? So now we're not going to have that problem where we have the voltage floating around on the surface where somebody can drown. Okay. So if you, in theory, were in fresh water and dove underneath, you would potentially not get affected? Well, we don't have a lot of research on this. But <laughs> potentially, if you could get out of the zone, right? And, you know, and, and scuba divers, because they have their suits on and stuff, and they're breathing their own air, really have never, don't get affected by this. Um, but in theory, yes, if you sank, the trouble is I think your lungs are full of water after you sink, and it's probably... If you could start moving again, it's kind of a you know move point. So move point. <clears throat> but if right. you were to throw the green wire into the soup, there's the key. Art says, yeah. What about the green wire? The ground on this circuit right now, right? So you don't have an alternative path alternative to new. So the reason we have the green pulled out is because we want all the electricity to go through the water like it is. If we were to throw the green in, okay. Well, now we would have leakage, and this, of course, would trip out. Now, I was going to do that, but that involves me putting my mitts close to the water, and I don't feel like that's 100% safe. But you can take our word for it, we've done it, that <laughs> if you had the green wire in this instance, then we would trip out the ELCI. Now, if a boat doesn't have ELCI, and you've got this green wire in there, yes, we've seen it here at local marinas where we've got 10 amps on the black wire, we've got seven amps on the white wire and three amps on the green or a lot of times if it's easier this is earth ground we'll see three amps leaving the propeller okay so we still are always going to see the net of, of zero but that's what we get with ac leakage ac leakage by the way does not destroy underwater metal components we've got plenty of uh, of references we've set up experiments in the lab because of the alternating back and forth, there's never one anode and one cathode, which is what you need for straight current corrosion. So super, you know, it, now it, it can be lethal, especially if you get the fresh water, but it doesn't under, do any destruction to underwater metals. Now, here's the last question. How many volts? 120. Four and a half, four point something, let's say five amps. Are we doing work? Yeah. 
How much work? 120 times five. 120 times five? 600. 600 watts? I don't see anything happening. So that, that's a battery. No, it's not a battery. We got 600 watts. What's the 600 watts doing? Art's got at the back. We're heating water. This, as time goes on, the temperature is going to increase and increase and probably change the salinity and the conductivity, and we'll see a little bit more, but this is essentially a hot water heater. I wouldn't recommend you build one this way, but you always have to think this is electricity, right? If, we're, if we've got potential, 120 volts, and we have current, that means we have power, we are doing something. And it is inherent loss, we're just warming up this water that I pulled out of the tap, which is now salt water. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Different than what you expected. Yeah. Takeaways, don't swim in fresh water. Okay. In a marina. In a marina. So why are people, why, why do human divers, why are they okay? <clears throat> because they have self-contained breathing, right? You're not going to drown if you've got your regulator in. And would it, still, would it still cause their limbs to It could, but the neoprene or your dry suit typically will isolate a scuba diver. All of the divers that change anodes and stuff that I've talked to have never really had any trouble with fresh water or salt water with drowning. It's always just people freely swimming on the surface. There has to be a fault in the marina, in a boat, somewhere that puts this electricity out on the surface of the water. And you know, I. It's really hard to measure how far below the surface and where does it go, we don't know. What we do know is statistics are there. People die every year because of this. And right now, you know, summer's coming on, it's warm, people are working, you know, you're buffing the boat, you're washing it, you're doing whatever, you know, jump in and cool off. Bad idea. So, What's weird though is the fact that salt water is more conductive but yet, if you were to swim in a saltwater marina, it would be potentially less lethal. Way less lethal in saltwater because the electricity has a path that's flowing through. It's just not free floating in kind of this big aura around wherever the fault is. You're not a preferred conductor in a saltwater environment, but you are a preferred conductor in a freshwater environment. So in this case, it's trying to find that other wire, not just some random body. And right. Well, and you got to remember in saltwater, you're connected to earth ground everywhere. Pilings and the whole, like there is paths for the electricity to return to its source very easily. So if you're amongst that, the way Gart says, you're not the preferred, you're not, you're not actually connected from this hot lead to ground. You know, there's a lot of other paths for it. It's when we're in fresh water and there is no path and it's just that paralyzing bit. It's that 60 cycles AC that messes with our nervous system. And so that's why I want to start this class with these big concepts. Okay, we've got DC straight current. We've got AC for electric shock drowning. What is the ELCI? How is that going to play into it as we go on and start doing corrosion surveys? Yes, Art. Yeah. So one thing, um, if you ever been, have any of you guys ever been to Seafair and seen all these people in Lake Washington swimming next to their oh, boat yeah. and having a great yeah. time? Why is there no electrical shock hazard when yep. the boat is floating in the middle of the lake, only in the marina? Because there's a lack of AC source? Because they make their own power. They can have yeah. a generator running, but they are their own thing. It's when you grid tie, when you're tied to earth, that it becomes a separate animal. When you are just creating electricity, you're, on, you're an island, and inside of that island, you're okay. You can even touch two different boats, and unless they're tied together up top, which they never are, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> offshore, right? It, it, unless one's, you know, then you can you can dance between them all day long because they're two separate power places, and you everything wants to return back to that boat. Nothing wants to return to the pier. Where as soon as you enter a swimming environment in a marina where there's there's literally electricity possibly on all sides of you, mm -hmm. all of it leaking out over here trying to get over there you swim through that then you become the preferred conductor in fresh water salt fresh water, water yeah, yeah. Uh, salt water exactly are. you know you got we did our generator labs last quarter so if the generator's running the only return path is back to that generator like art said there's not all these other electrical places in a marina which is other boats it's all the different docks it's the shore it's there's so many different places for faults in a marina once you're out and there's only one source to the boat and back, much safer. All right. 
Well, thanks for watching. I'm gonna de-energize this before anybody gets hurt. We put it away. De-energize it and throw the ground in. Yeah, we can do that. So let's de-energize. So it's off. And uh, all right. So now I got the green wire floating halfway between the white, and the black, the hot, and the neutral, just in the bucket of water. We can turn this on. Well, we can try to turn it on. It just snaps off immediately because white and black are no longer balanced. With that salt water and that green wire, there's no reason why some of that electricity, some of the current flow is not going to just automatically take the ground. They are no longer in an exclusive relationship. That's right, exclusive relationship. <laughs> That's why when we wire boats, remember class, we got to have all of our grounds together, our neutrals together, inverted neutrals. The only way that you can wire a boat and keep it safe and keep track of this hot <coughs> neutral and ground is to arts term, mutually exclusive arrangement. <laughs> <laughs>